What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Omnibus Haul. It's your boy Jen Min and today we got a nice mix of manga, Omnibus, and Absolutes. And looking at this haul, I've actually read three of these books, but two of them are Absolutes. Before we jump into it, I gotta give a huge shout out to OrganicPriceBooks.com. That's where I get all my collected editions. They have competitive prices with great packaging, plus they take pre-orders. Use code GEMMINT every time and it'll save yourself an extra $2. With that being said, hit that like, make sure you're subscribed, and let's jump into this haul. First, let's start off with the manga. We've got Fist of the North Star Volume 9. It looks like I'm behind on Volume 8, but let's take a quick look at it anyway. Yeah, so it looks like I'm behind. I got to go back and pick up volume eight, but I think I only read volumes one through three so far, but it's been a while. I really need to do a reread through. Here goes the spine and here is the back. This is a classic 80s manga. It's one of those staples like Akira. Fist of the North Star, you've got Kenshiro collecting chapters 109 through 122, giving us some color in the beginning. In the first couple of pages, like it's color, then it goes all orange, and then it goes black and white. And the paper quality changes too. Kind of weird that they do that. So from what I read so far, it feels very Mad Max, dystopian future. You've got Kenshiro, who's got great power, a brother who's kind of got similar powers, but almost in reverse, uh, dealing with like pressure points and such. So they have brutal combat and violent action scenes here. Uh, story about family and brothers and... There's a lot of cool stuff going on here, a lot of cool characters. I got into this really from the Prime One Studio statues, just kind of like with Berserk. And I really dug what I read so far, uh, but I kind of fell behind it, so I need, to, I need to catch up here. Here goes chapter 115. I got a lot of color in here, man. You get the color, the orange. They have supernatural powers, a lot of action, a lot of fighting. Fist of the North Star, classic manga all right next up we have the amazing spider-man beyond i was following this run in single issues and they quickly came out with an omnibus it's pretty thin but let's flip through it all right so this is the cover of the dust jacket you can see all the different creators on this book that's because this was like a transitional period after the nick spencer run a couple of other people got in there patrick gleason mark bagley uh jed mckay zeb wells here is the spine like I said, it's a thinner omnibus, bringing back Ben Riley, setting up the whole dark web storyline. So what it collects is Amazing Spider-Man 75 through 93, then 78, 80, and 88, and 92.bay. So those are beyond kind of point one issues. Mary Jane and Black Cat beyond, and material from Amazing Spider-Man uh, 74 uh, and the free comic book day 2021 spider-man slash venom so ben riley is back in this omnibus he works for the beyond corporation they're kind of sponsoring spider-man and giving him tech and gear and i don't want to get too much into the story like we try to save those for the omnibus reviews but just to give you a little gist giving us more on the creators here with a beautiful wraparound cover and i like the artwork here i feel like that's referencing the whole sin eater storyline right wasn't the sin eater he removed the sin from people like norman osborne from ben riley but removing pieces of his memory not a good look you saw how he was as scarlet spider in the uh, across the spider verse movie so royal blue cover page got some dope artwork here in the front we have the credits again a lot of creators because of that transitional period that we were in here Nice wraparound cover with a kind of new Spider-Man costume and the classic. Gotta love that double page spread, Spidey goodness. So I didn't really enjoy Nick Spencer's run, but I was excited when ASM 75 came out, when it was going in this new Ben Riley direction. There was also like a five issue Ben Riley miniseries that came out around this time. Kind of surprised they didn't include that. Maybe that'll be included in a dark web omnibus, but it kind of seems like this is a road to dark web omnibus. They sidelined Peter Parker like right in the beginning of this run and he was in the hospital. I forget what the whole story was. If you guys were watching the new comic book day reviews during that time, you would have seen it. But I found myself enjoying this run. I hated the Beyond Corporation and I think that was kind of the point. It was like a modern day Alchemex and you kind of knew they were up to something even though they didn't let us in on it at the time. I like that new design too for the Ben Riley Spider-Man suit. But some of the tie-ins I wasn't really into. I know I started dropping the BEY.1 uh, -E issues and the Mary Jane and Black Cat stuff I never got into. So overall, I mean, I appreciate the content being collected, but it's not an omnibus that I would have asked for. I'm sure there are a lot more deserving runs. 
Yeah, so I guess this wouldn't really be a spoiler now because everybody's aware of Dark Web, but you could see how he becomes Chasm towards the end of this run, and uh, that would lead into Dark Web. Then we get a bunch of variants in the back, of course, in Hyuk Lee, one of my favorite variant cover artists right now. You got Scotty Young. There goes Scarlet Spider, Ron Lim variant. The Joe Jusco 1992 Marvel Masterpieces. They re-released those as variants. There goes another one, Sandman. Got a Liefeld Deadpool one. I forgot the, about that costume change on this run. There goes the Miles tie-in. Modern Omnibus, you're going to get a lot of variants in the back, which is cool, man. You get all the artwork. You don't have to track down the individuals. Patrick Gleason riding high off that Spider-Man web theme. And there you go, just variants and the stories. We got a new Loki omnibus in here, the God of Stories. Kind of a nice collection omnibus. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, here goes the cover of the dust jacket. I'm digging that border. It's kind of like you're reading old Norse mythology stories. Here we have the spine, then going on to the back, telling us about the book, giving us each of the covers, collecting Loki one through four from that 2004 volume. One through four from the 2010 volume. Loki, Agent of Asgard, one through 17. You get Original Sin, 5.1 through 5.5. Vote Loki, one through four, where he's trying to become the president. Loki, one through five from the 2019 series. Avengers, Loki Unleashed. And material from All New Marvel Now, point one. And War of the Realms Omega for 125 bucks. The God of Mischief lies in story. So... Breaking down what's going on in this volume, letting us know about the creators, uh, Jason Aaron, you got Al Ewing, Asad Ribic. Beautiful wraparound cover here too, kind of like memories is the vibe I'm getting out of here. All these different memories of Loki and being these different versions of himself from presidential candidate to child to alligator. Of course, you got that jungle green cover page god of story so i like the graphic design that they put into this omnibus too man that's kind of cool when they give it those themes right so we got the credits here slash table of contents love that Assad ribic jason aaron team up i don't think i read uh, a lot of this stuff man I, I don't know if i've caught any of this it might have just been a couple issues here or there but I was a big fan of the Jason Aaron Thor run. So unless this was collected in there and I read it in that omnibus, I'd have to double check. Different artwork throughout, right? Isad Ribic doesn't do the whole run. So kind of mixes it up a little bit. It's really like a Loki completionist omnibus, right? Like you have all these different four to five issue miniseries throughout the years, different creative teams, different Marvel events going on at the time, like Original Sin, which was what? The Death of the Watcher. So they probably should have released this Closer to uh, Loki season two coming out kind of early on Marvel's end, but they must have had their reasons. All right. So, you know what you're getting here. You're getting a bunch of Loki stories. Let's see what else we get. Looks like uh, we get the nice cover with the border before each issue. As you can see, a little living tribunal action here. And then here we have variant covers in the back. So pretty much a modern omnibus get the same kind of treatment variant covers in the back. Wraparound cover on the hardcover. Let's see if we get anything else, if there's any scripts or anything. Oh, this is kind of a cool progression shot here. Some more sketches for covers, sketches for interiors. Oh, okay, so you have some articles, combined covers. So some nice bonus material here. Looking forward to Loki season two as well. All right, now we got the all new Wolverine featuring Laura Kinney, but now we have the X-23 omnibus. Now this is in her origin omnibus. It follows series from 2005 moving forward. Let's see what it collects. All right, kind of a bland omnibus cover here. I, I never really liked that kind of early 2000s X-23 logo, just that big thick X. <laughs> Volume one, here's the back collecting X-23 one through six from the 2005 series, X-23 Target X one through six. X-23, which is the volume A from 2010, you get issue one. It must have been a one-shot. Uh, and then in the same year, they did a 21-issue series. So that's the bulk of this omnibus. You get Captain Universe slash X-23 number one. Dakin, Dark Wolverine 8 and 9. We need a Dakin omnibus. And material from X-Men to Serve and Protect 2. Wolverine, The Road to Hell, and all-new Wolverine Saga. 
So Craig Kyle, Christopher Yost, we got $125 cover price. Beginning the story of the girl who will be Wolverine. You know, I wonder why they didn't include the uh, Nyx series in here in her first appearance. It's kind of weird. The creators here, as you can see. Oh, Phil Noto doing some work. Marco Cicchetto, great artist. Kind of playing on the hardcover itself. You got a different image on the cover. Same spine and then simple on the back. Got the black cover page. It feels very much like the era that this material is from. Credit page gives you virgin covers jumping into the issues, which is cool. And I don't think I've read any of this material. I like this artwork, though. This seems very like Jim Lee-ish. What is that? Philip Tan covers. Yeah, great artwork. Brutal here. Little Laura Kinney popping claws and taking names. Here goes issue four. Nice. I guess it's got Philip Tan covers in the beginning of this series here. This, I have no idea. I have not read any of this material. Flipping through, it looks pretty cool, though. I guess drop me a comment, man. If you guys are up on this, is it worth the read? I picked it up just because I figured, you know what? X-23, it's an X-Men omnibus. I've got the all-new Wolverine Omni. But uh, the artwork, this actually looks pretty good. No wonder they made an omnibus for it, right? <laughs> so X-23 Omni, we know what it collects. Now we get an idea of what it looks like on the inside. Let's see what kind of bonuses we get here. You guessed it, guys. Variant covers. Like the X-Force look. Got a Dejevic variant. That's cool. So introduction by Craig Kyle. We've got some sketches. We've got some, looks like articles. Giving a quick biography on Laura Kinney. Hey, and we might see her show up in uh, Deadpool 3. You never know. All right, the last omnibus, man. Volume 5 for Uncanny X-Men. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the matching spines, but we all knew that was coming. Either way, cool omnibus. Let's jump into it. All right, so I went with the X-Men 205 cover here. You got that classic Wolverine cover for the Marvel 25th anniversary. Here goes the spine. Yes, I know all about it. But Chris Claremont, John Romita Jr. Got Cockrum, uh, Nocenti, and Art Adams. Still have those nice big covers on the back. Actually, probably the biggest like thumbnail shot of all the covers and what it collects here. $125 cover price collecting Uncanny X-Men 194 through 209. Annuals 9 and 10. New Mutant Special Edition 1 and Annual 2, which is the first uh, U.S. appearance of Psylocke. Nightcrawler's miniseries, the Long Shot miniseries, which you get Long Shot, you get Mojo, the Mojo verse, Spiral and Marvel Fanfare 33. War in Asgard and a Phoenix Reborn. So letting us know where we're at with the fifth volume of Uncanny X-Men, a biography on all the creators. Older material, so they give it the simple hardcover treatment, same spine, X logo on the back, opening up to some black cover pages. Old school graphic design for this omnibus as well, matching the older volumes, unlike the spine. But very cool to see like the white background version of this uh, X-Men cover. Table of contents, the new team, love that. Chris Claremont introduction starts with issue 194 of Uncanny X-Men. So this one I've read issues here and there. I've definitely read the long shot miniseries and various uh, X-Men issues. Art Adams killed the artwork on this one. Dang. Here we go, X-Men 200. I believe this was another dust jacket cover they had for this one, right? with Magneto. So this is what, where Magneto is the headmaster for the Xavier uh, School for Gifted Mutants. Okay, Rachel, so she was like the second Phoenix, right? I remember that. Here goes the cover for the dust jacket we have. This looks like it's gotta be Barry Windsor Smith stuff, right? Winter in New York vibes. Brutal fight between Wolverine and Lady Deathstrike. Here goes the Nightcrawler stuff. Yeah, so very cool to not only, you know, continue completing this run in collected formats, but uh, also giving us the uh, tie-ins that were going on at the same time as well. Like I was mentioning, the Mojo verse. All right, here goes the bonus material. Wow. Dave Sim, Cyclops. That looks great. Bob Larkin, Rick Leonardi for Phoenix Classic. Rick Leonardi needs more love, man. All right, so we have some pencils for the interiors. We get a lot of bonus material in this one. Look at this. 
He get cover sketches and he goes inks now. He goes to the long shot original artwork, covers and such, interiors, house ads for Nightcrawler, Marvel Age stuff. Sometimes they give you like trade paperback covers. So here's one by Art Adams. Here goes another trade paperback cover by Alan Davis. Get a couple of introductions and afterwards. X-Men classic covers, so reprinting issues from this omnibus with, update, uh, with updated covers, recolorings and such. And there goes that same Wolverine image from before. All right, on to the absolutes, and I will do a comparison on this one with the absolute metal. Here's Dark Knight's death metal, and it has a darker metal sleeve. Let's take a look at what's inside. All right, so I wanted to show these guys together because I like how they made them match, this being Dark Knight's metal, and then the new one, Dark Knight's death metal. This one had more of a silver, clean, metal grate type of design. This one's got like this weathered black looking metal, which is pretty cool. Here we have the spines for the slip cases, so they look similar as well. Then just to compare the dust jackets, metal, death metal, same kind of silver backgrounds. Here goes the spines on the dust jackets, and then the virgin covers on the back. And then we have the interior of the dust jacket for Dark Knight's Death Metal, biography on Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, of course. And then we have the hardcover itself. You've got the sketch image on that type of silver background, spine, same image on the back. All right, so let's jump into it. Opening up, we've got that metal great design for the cover page. Got Dark Knight's Death Metal. Here's the credits. All right, so collecting Dark Knight's Death Metal issues one through seven. We have an introduction by Scott Snyder himself. And then when we jump into issue one, it starts off with the Virgin cover. So this is a recent story. I read it in single issues as it was coming out, a follow-up to Metal, obviously. And this one just gets crazy. It takes the Trinity, puts them into this impossible situation which they need to overcome, leading to kind of a rebirth of the DC universe. Great artwork here, Greg Capullo, one of uh, the earliest artists that I got into. I actually used to think a lot of Spawn stuff was McFarlane that was actually Greg Capullo. I think I should just do a reread of this and uh, do a review just like I did with Dark Knight's Metal. It's been a while since I've tackled it, a couple years, so would like to jump back into it. With the Absolute Edition, you're getting oversized artwork. It's the most prestige format that you can get. So you can see we're getting beautiful artwork here. Of course, like most Absolute Editions, we have the ribbon here that you can use as the bookmark. Of course, we have a lot of variant covers in the back, some beautiful artwork doing uh, Justice League rock star style. Awesome to get this in this oversized format. So you get a ton of variant covers, as you can see. Got some art germ pinups here. Francisco Matina does great stuff. Lucio Perillo as well. So we also get some sketch character designs in the back. Here goes the panel for page one. Yeah, Capullo pencils, man. Awesome. Now, in the back of this absolute, it also gives us this huge map. So just to give you an idea of how huge this map is, here goes the absolute right here. So the land of the Batman who laughs. Pretty cool to see them map out everything. Man, you got Arkham Asylum over here, Brimstone Bay, Themyscira, Metropolis over here. If you guys are into exclusive variant comic books, you got to check out that SpidermanBooth.com. They have a monthly subscription box that gives you five comics each month, $100 worth of retail value for just 50 bucks. But in addition, you also get a variant that's exclusive to this box. And for July, we have an Essencia issue 18, an Alex Regal Akira homage limited to just 600 copies. Head on over to that SpidermanBooth.com so you can check out their subscription box today. And lastly, for just three issues, we have an absolute, but it's three Jokers, Jeff Johns, Jason Fabok. What more could you ask for? Here goes the slipcase. You've got Red Hood, Batgirl, and Batman on the front. And then we have the three Jokers on the back. Here we have the spine of the actual slipcase. And then on the back, we can see the spine that's on the book. Retailing $100. So it looks like this one doesn't have a dust jacket. I thought that was pretty interesting. You get the three Jokers covers here on the front. We saw the spine and then the back. We see the neon green ribbon here on the bottom. 
opening up some killer Joker cover pages. Now this one had a ton of covers too. Each issue had so many different variations, just regular kind of covers like Joker with a crowbar or with the fish gag or all these different type of versions. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot of that here. Jason Fabok, uh, Jeff Johns, one of my favorite DC writers. Three Jokers kind of following up on that whole, what was that, Final Crisis, Batman on the Mobius chair, finding out there were three Jokers, kind of playing with that idea. I dug it, man. I always like uh, Jeff Johns' storytelling, but I know a lot of fans felt like they didn't really stick the landing on this and kind of had a plot hole. But not to spoil it, this is just a haul. I'll reread this and do a review on it as well. We might as well do that. Uh, love the paneling, love the artwork, and let's jump into the bonus features. So, giving us what looks like sketches on the covers before their final versions. Here's some pencils and inks. And they kind of give us little captions as well. Here goes some progress pictures, pretty cool. Looks like it even gives us some like graphic design progress here. Pretty interesting. Well, when you only have three issues, you really got to fill it up, right? But this is the biggest page trim that you're going to get from DC Comics. So the most blown up version of this Jason Fabok art. You got the black and white sketch. You've got the colored version, the blood splatter versions. Even some kind of like background starting the project. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like the idea of three Jokers because there are so many different versions of the Joker throughout time. So it's kind of a cool concept to play with. Scripts here, some page panel layouts showing you the inks versus the colors. A lot goes into these issues, man. Very cool to see the whole progress. And that's what's fun about collected editions. You know, you get more than just the story. You get the behind the scenes a little bit. Got some Easter eggs. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can correlate panels with the reference material. That's actually worth dissecting. That might be a good video in itself, actually. All right, there you go. And there we have it. That was quite the haul. Let me know if you're going to pick any of these up in the comments down below. Appreciate you watching and stay minty fresh. Peace.